Welcome back to Starting From Scratch, this Football Manager 2018 experiment where at the start of the series I removed nearly all of the players from Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs, Man United, Arsenal and Man City using the FM18 editor. The series has proven to be popular, thank you for the support, I'm really pleased that you have enjoyed this idea. We've gone quite far into the future so far in the first four parts and I did ask you guys if you wanted me to continue and you said yes. So I'm going to continue three more seasons in this part five. Now, if you want a part six where I holiday, let's say, ten seasons into the future after this point, then let's say 250 likes. We've been getting around about 250 likes on the last couple of videos. If we can reach that again today, I'll holiday ten years into the future just to see how things have changed. So we're now in the year 2028. But before we have a look at what's going on, as you can see, Man City have managed to return to the top of the table. We've returned to a little bit of normality, I suppose, with Man City and Chelsea dominating. However, a few people interested in me looking at the managers that were released from these clubs at the start of the save. So, for example, Guardiola. Now, I've already had a look and you're going to be disappointed because they've actually all nearly all retired. They couldn't find a club of their level, I suppose, that wanted them. Real Madrid, Barcelona, all those sorts of teams have managers, I suppose. They didn't want to sack their manager to get someone like Guardiola in. And he just retired. It's the same with Klopp. Jürgen Klopp retired after his time at Liverpool. Mourinho also retired when he was released from Manchester United. Arsene Wenger retired too, but he did actually manage Roma after leaving Arsenal. So he actually did get a job, but then retired because of age more than anything. Uh, Pochettino isn't even on the game anymore. His history wasn't saved, probably because he's not actually won anything as a manager. So yeah, he doesn't even exist. He retired as well after leaving Spurs. The only manager that did actually get a job was Conte, of the, the Chelsea manager, because he, he left... This is wrong, by the way. We obviously released him in 2017, but it says he left Chelsea in 2019, so that's wrong. I assume they didn't re-sign him, actually. Let's just tr check. No. Martino was in charge. Then Ramos. So, yeah, that's that's completely wrong. Uh, but he moved to Juventus for a couple of years, then moved to Monaco for three seasons, and now, in the last two years, he's been manager of Valencia. So he's been having an interesting career moving around Europe. Let's get back to business then. So Man City, champions of England again. Like I said, we've returned to a little bit of normality, although it's only Man City and Chelsea that are having success. Arsenal, Man United mid-table. Of course, Tottenham and Liverpool competing in the championship. So let's see how they got on. Liverpool promoted in second place behind Sheffield United. Tottenham, mid-table. Not good news for them. But Liverpool back in the top flight. This chap is just ripping it up. Traore, English region, 34 goals in 55 games at the age of 26. He is scoring bucket loads of goals for Manchester City. Tim Howard still in charge, by the way. This is their team. And I think they're still spending money. Although they did sell a lot of players this year as well. So they actually ha only had... Well, under £20 million net spend. But, yeah, I mean, they're able to do that. They're just bringing in so much young talent and then selling it on when they don't need them. This guy, they sold for £99 million to Real Madrid, but they don't need him because of the other players they have. This was their top sign in this season. Brazilian central midfielder. They are a formidable force now. Chelsea have Gary Neville in charge. Was he in charge last last video? No, I don't know. He wasn't. It was Alex Neal. He was sacked. He won the league and he won three cups. He was a very successful manager. He's now moved on to Bayern Leverkusen. He's having a good career. But Gary Neville has been in charge only for the last 20 days. So Alex Neal was sacked because he finished second in the top flight with 87 points. That is really harsh. But interesting to see Gary Neville in charge now. This is the current Chelsea squad for those that are interested. Obviously, loads of regens in there at this point. Those, are f for those of you that don't know football manager, those are sort of the fake players that come through that are randomly generated every year to replace players retiring. Um, but as you can see, Chelsea did actually spend more money than Man City this season, net spend-wise. Maybe that's why they sacked Alex Nil. But, you know, it's a tough ask beating that Man, that Man City team, I think. Arsenal down in 10th place. They managed to, to get top half. Not the greatest season from them. They were on the decline, uh, but they're back up to 10th place. Transfer-wise, they didn't spend much at all. They, th this is the difference between them and Man City and Chelsea. Arsenal and Man United just aren't spending money. Stephen Kirby's still in charge, by the way. They are rich, but they're just not spending anything, and it's very bizarre. So Man United in 11th place. 
Uh, moving down to the championship then, we saw Liverpool uh, second place going up automatically with Lee Johnson in charge. Now, he was in charge of Spurs when they had some success. And he's just come in in the last 92 days and got them promoted. They sacked Sean Derry, presumably because they weren't going to get promoted or they weren't close to promotion. Uh, but it worked, I suppose. It did work. I, I guess they brought him in around about March time. And he only lost one game, probably, by the looks of it. So, yeah, not bad at all from Liverpool. They did spend £27 million, but they sold £73 million worth of players. So... They've done pretty well to finish second place, in my opinion. Tottenham have been the worst team in this experiment. They are stuck in the championship, and they have been since their relegation in 2023. They've only got OK finances, national reputation. It's not looking good for them, is it? It really isn't looking good. Man City are really dominating now. I've holidayed another season into the future. By the way, holidayed into the future. Someone pointed out. Uh, what does that mean? I assume you don't play Football Manager. There's a lot of people that have subscribed to me recently that don't play Football Manager. And what I mean by holiday into the future is essentially, I'll just go to my profile, go on holiday and it simulates the season. So I don't do anything. I, I, I'm not in charge of anyone. I'm unemployed and I'm going on holiday into the future and simulating that that season effectively. And I can go quite far into the future. You can go many 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 seasons into the future but for this experiment i'm just doing one season gaps each time so that's what i mean by holiday into the future just to, to clear that up man city easily won the league this year 15 points clear of second place newcastle who did well to finish ahead of chelsea man united managed to grab a european place up in sixth place arsenal though relegated with Liverpool just about surviving. So Arsenal probably will be playing with Spurs in the Championship next season unless they've recovered. Nope, they haven't. Mid-table again. So yeah, Arsenal and Spurs in the Championship together in the 2029-2030 season. So Tim Howard still in charge of Man City, leading them to glory again. They're still spending lots of money. This was their big money signing, a Belgian central midfielder who looks very good. They're just improving their team all the time. Chelsea... Oh, Renato Santos is in charge of Chelsea and he's a Portuguese Portuguese chap. Let's have a look at the manager history. So Gary Neville only lost 211 days. Joe Cole came in as caretaker manager. He's a coach at Chelsea, but he took charge for, for 13 days before Renato Santos came in. He's managed quite a few teams, as you can see there. Uh, in fact, no, he's managed three teams. Brentford, Stoke and now Chelsea. He was a, a player at all those teams. Fascinating stuff, but Chelsea struggling to keep up with Man City despite spending all this money. £92 million spent on George Moses, and he still couldn't part the Man City defence and win the league, could he? Man United, sixth place. Stephen Kirby still in charge, and he spent a bit more money this year, I think, overall. But yeah, the, the team just isn't good enough to, to get back up to that top four place. We'll have to see if they're able to fully recover or are they going to turn into a team that just floats around the mid-table area and occasionally qualifies for Europe. Liverpool, their first season back in the top flight, not too bad. They've actually got rid of uh, the manager, though, the previous manager. Lee Johnson was sacked. He's not got a job anymore. I think he's done quite a good job. I think that's pretty harsh. They sacked him. Danny, in, at the end of the season, after keeping them up, Danny Craig Kate has come in now for next season. They did spend plus £15 million, pounds, but you know you can't expect to have an amazing season by spending that amount of money in the Premier League these days with all those players going out. They signed Udegaard, though. 30-year-old Udegaard, 120 caps for Norway. Does look like a very good player still at the age of 30. He actually played for Bayern Munich and then Monaco. Signing for £45 million. Pounds. But the last couple of seasons, he lost favour there by the looks of it. So he's moved to Liverpool. Uh, did he actually play this season? Only 13 games. He might have moved in January or something like that. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, it was January. So that makes sense. Kept them up or helped keep them up. Arsenal. Oh, Tedrick Boyata, the Belgian centre-back, is in charge of Arsenal. It's only his second job after to managing um, Norwich, as you can see there. That is pretty random. Jack Wilshire was caretaker manager for a while uh, after Robbie Nelson was sacked. The, the Scott was sacked after a poor job this season. So Arsenal going to be playing in the Championship next year after finishing bottom of the Premier League. Tottenham, on the other hand, though, still struggling. 
Neil Ardley is in charge and yeah, it's not great for them, is it? They, they've not spent much money at all during this whole experiment, really. Look at this. I think Man City have spent more on in like half a season than they have. In the, they, they did have two seasons where they spent a bit of money. That might have been when they were back in the Premier League. But yeah, overall, they've really not spent much compared to the other teams, have they? So this might be the end of this experiment. We're now in the year 2030. If you can hit 250 likes on this video in the next couple of days, I'm going to holiday 10 years into the future until the year 2040 and see if the landscape of English football has changed and it really could have changed a lot because we've just seen Manchester United get relegated from the Premier League obviously Man City and Chelsea are two of the biggest teams in Europe right now they are Man City in particular are dominating aren't they they're back to the top they've won three titles in a row five titles in a row from the original top six clubs Leicester haven't won it since 2025 now. But Manchester United relegated from the Premier League in 2030 after finishing sixth last season as well. Wow. Liverpool seem to have done a lot better this time around as well. Seventh place. It really is quite remarkable. Have Arsenal recovered? They have. They won the league. 97 points. Easily going up, along with Sheffield Wednesday and West Ham in the playoffs. Spurs, though, down in 15th. They're slowly dropping. Will Man United turn into a championship team with Spurs, or will they return to the top of the table? We've seen Liverpool and Arsenal get relegated in the last couple seasons, and they've both managed to get promoted back again. But it might be a different story for Manchester United, might it? Anyway, we'll have a look once again at the clubs, and then I'll go into a bit more detail looking at who's won the FA Cup and the individual awards and that sort of thing, club coefficients, etc. Manchester City, only lost two games this season. Tim Howard is a revelation, isn't he? He's been in charge of five seasons, and he's won three titles, I think? Four titles, possibly four. Ben Woodburn is still the captain of Man City. He's got 122 caps and 81 goals for Wales. Wow. I mean, he's easily the best player in Wales, isn't he? Wonder Kid turned into a world-class player and he's still a top performer for Man City ahead of all these other brilliant regents. Four and a half star reputation now. They really have returned to where they were, where we uh, started this experiment, really. They spent £99 million, pounds, under £100 million pounds this year. That is a miracle in itself. But this is the Man City team. It is... It's pr probably very good. In fact, let's have a look using the in-game editor to see which one am I looking for. This is what I want to see. We can see how good they are, how many world-class players they have. Look at all these quality players. And then easily top of the table quality um, players as well here. A world-class, I always say, is anything over 175. These are kind of borderline world-class players. These are top quality Premier League players, that's for sure. They've got an incredible team. I mean, Kieran Tierney is their second worst player, according to this. And he, you know how good he becomes on Football Manager 2018. He's obviously 33 now, so he has dropped off a bit. But still, that is very impressive for Man City. Chelsea actually finished below Leicester City this time around. Oh, Conte's back in charge. That is perfection. That is perfect symmetry. Because, obviously, we got rid of Conte from Chelsea at the start of this experiment. And he is back in charge of Chelsea. That is brilliant. Uh, he's only been in charge literally for the last 15 days. They got rid of Renato Sanchez, Santos as he didn't manage to win the league. They are harsh, but Conte, that is just fabulous. I love that because he's obviously the only one that's still managing out of the six managers. And to return to Chelsea, I mean, that's another incentive to holiday 10 years into the future to see how he gets on with Chelsea. This is the Chelsea team. They have some good players. They've got a couple world-class players. Similar to, to Man City, they've obviously put some youth players into the first team as well down there. But yeah, they uh, spent way more than Man City this year. £223 million. This guy is one of the, the highest transfers ever. £168 million for this Argentinian central midfielder with 26 caps. Wow. What's his potential? Clicked on the wrong one. Attribute details. 184 potential. And he's already 177. Oh, I know he's 23. He might reach that 184. What a player. Wow. Okay, let's uh, let's go back and have a look at Liverpool, the next placed best placed team in the top flight. So they're actually without a manager. They finished seventh, but they've 
Lee Johnson came... Did he come back? I'm confused. Lee Johnson managed them until 2029. Oh, no, he was sacked last... Yeah, we saw that before, didn't we? Danny Craig came in. I'm getting confused myself now. Danny Craig... Oh, he's left, so he's gone to Wolves. So Wolves enticed him away. They finished one place below Liverpool, but they convinced him to leave Liverpool and join Wolves. Does that mean Wolves are a bigger team now? Three and a half star reputation in Liverpool. Wolves are three and a half star reputation as well. But they are... They're both rich. Um, well, they're very similar teams, actually, looking at that. But for whatever reason, their manager has gone. Not Didn't spend a huge amount of money well, yet again. Maybe they're relying on their, their youth system. Looking at their team, you can see the difference in quality to Chelsea and Man City. They've got... Uh, I mean, Man City... The number of players they have over 156 current ability is crazy. So, yeah. You can see why Man City are running away with it. Man United relegated... What a story. I mean, this chap was relegated with Arsenal, wasn't he, last year? Pretty much. He's come to Man United and got them relegated in the last... Well, it, it was, I mean, Stephen Kirby's fault as well, I suppose. But, yeah, they didn't spend very much money. Their team is is okay. They've got some good players, but don't have the quality to challenge for the top sort of European places, I suppose. But I would say that team's still good enough to to stay up I would say looking at the current ability there wow Manchester United relegated in 2030 so let's have a look at Arsenal then champions of the championship with Boyata in charge they spent 37 million pounds sold 73 million pounds worth of players but it was enough to get them up looking at this team I mean it's, it's not that different to the Man United team I suppose in regards to quality so yeah you can see why they easily won the championship Tottenham on the other hand Poor old Tottenham. Danny Butterfield is in charge now. They've had so many managers on this. It's ridiculous. But poor old Spurs. They're just, they've got no money to spend. Oh, they're rich, apparently, but they're just not spending the money. I don't know whether it's the AI, the computer, sort of being stupid or not. I don't know. It's just bizarre. Their team is just not good enough to get out that championship. They're just about good enough to be mid-table, I suppose, looking at them. FA Cup-wise, then, these are the recent winners of the FA Cup. Man City have just about scraped past Cardiff City to win the most recent FA Cup on penalties. Not the greatest performance from them. But they have won two of the last three, with Newcastle winning the other. League Cup-wise, they've also won that, with Leicester and Newcastle winning that competition as well. They've both done very well on this experiment. A few people interested in looking at Leicester. Because they have turned into a very powerful team. Obviously, four-star reputation team, as you can see here. Manager-wise, they've had... The contrast is is dramatic compared to the other six teams that we've investigated during this experiment. Because they, they've had far fewer managers, as you can see there. Um, captain is Andreas Christensen at the age of 34 now. They... they they didn't spend much money this year. They, they haven't actually spent huge amounts in, in recently. Like, net spends... They haven't really had to. They've been. They've put together a good enough team. They must just have a really good system in place to produce players and get the best out of players. Great, get really good cheap signings as well because they've obviously look at this team. It's very good. You can see why they're qualifying for the the Champions League on a regular basis. Newcastle's. Well, have a look at them. Eddie Howe's now in charge. How long's he been in charge for? Yeah, well, almost two years. Uh, Benitez actually left in 2019, but they've had Sean Dyche, they've had Eddie Howe. This is his second spell in charge, in fact. Gary Neville's been there, Paul Lambert has been here. So they've had an interesting mix of players, but they seem to be good enough to qualify for the Champions League every now and then. Traore, by the way, still banging in the goals for England and Manchester City. Let's have a look at England then. Andy Scott, still in charge of England. He's been here for, for almost four years now. And the top players, Marcus Rashford, who now plays for Barcelona, who left for £68 million from Bayern Munich. Deli Alli plays for Bayern Munich. He's been there quite a while. PSG picked him up. Well, in fact, it was Leicester City that signed him on a free. Remember, he helped them win a couple of league titles. Moved to PSG for £70 million and then moved to Bayern Munich for £101 million. What a player he is. He's now 34, but he's still... The second best player in England. Reese Oxford has turned into a fantastic talent. He's now 31. He's coming towards the end of his career as well. But after being bought by Leipzig from West Ham in 2023-24, moved to 
uh, Bayern Munich and then PSG. Traore is the fourth best player. Bernard Chandler, another regen, plays for Chelsea. I mean, the team is quite different now, but it has kind of returned to Man City and Chelsea players featuring. Trent Alexander-Arnold at the age of 31, by the way, 109 caps for his country. He's been at Newcastle since the start of this save when he was released by Liverpool. It's one of the reasons why Newcastle have done so well, because they've held on to this very talented player who is an exceptional, top-quality Premier League player, 160 current ability. What a player. Uh, we'll just have a look at the team, actually, the overall team. You can see there is a mix of players in here. Look, looking at it from best to worst current ability-wise, uh, Jordan Pickford has dropped off now. He's 36 years old, so he's not quite as good as he was. Playing for Leipzig, left Everton for £28 million. So even the players that we didn't remove from these clubs, some of them have gone abroad. And to interesting clubs as well, who'd have thought Pickford would end up at Leipzig? Reese Oxford's at PSG of all teams. Um, yeah, it's, it has kind of returned to the English base, though, to the team. We did see a lot more foreign players a few years ago. Brazil have managed to win the World Cup finally for the first time in, well, 24 years. They, uh, they beat Germany in the final of the 2026 tournament with England finishing... Th in fact, I've already shown this, haven't I? Yeah, I've shown this because this is 2026. We're about to have another World Cup very shortly. Uh, Portugal won the most recent Euros. They beat England in the finals. England have been a bit unlucky not to win a tournament, I suppose, on this. If we look at the competition reputation, the English Premier League has actually dropped off again. They did get up to third, but strangely, it's uh, dropped down to fifth once again. There is a way to look at nation... This is what I was meant to look at last time, but this is the nation coefficient. So despite England being fifth in... Well, the Premier League being fifth in the reputation table, they're actually top of the nation coefficients. This is for this is for Champions League football, isn't it? Or is this na nation... Ah, I think that's something... What's the difference between nation coefficients and nation club coefficients? I'm sure someone knows out there. I think this is the one for the European football. European club football because it's called nation club coefficients qualification yeah that must be because they're fourth in the qualification places so they do get four teams entering at the group stage as you can see there Italy down in fifth only have two um that's quite a big drop from fourth to fifth isn't it suddenly there's loads of different things you can look at you know finances you can have a look at the turnover which is dominated by AC Milan at the moment Chelsea actually have a bigger turnover than Man City interestingly there's some sort of club coefficients. You can sort of see how dominant they are in European football. Newcastle, all the way up in 11th. So there's three good English teams there and Leicester down there. Champions League then. We haven't seen an English winner on this. So Man City, although they've been very good in the Premier League, they've failed to reach a final even of the Champions League. It's actually been dominated by Bayern Munich and PSG for many, many years. We've also seen Dortmund reach a final as well. But since 2023-24, Dortmund are the only other team to reach a final of the Champions League. That is crazy. And the Euro Cup has been won by the English team. So Man City and Chelsea have been good enough to, to win that competition they've just not been good enough in the champions league southampton have also reached a final as have newcastle let's have a look at the individual awards then so recently we've seen to stegen still pick up goalkeeper of the year at the age of 35 three years ago this chap managed to win it at a young age remember hamid arab who is an exceptional goalkeeper he's, he's already got 98 caps of Holland at the age of 29. He's a goalkeeper so he could play for quite a few more years and recently this this regen yilmaz Looks like a good goal. He's Dutch as well. They've got two of the best goalkeepers in the world. In fact, <laughs> that's really strange. They've basically got the two best goalkeepers in the world. Let's have a look at the national team. So, Arab has got 186 current ability. He almost 180. He's really unlucky to have to be in the same generation. as They're both the same age as well, I think. Where are we? Arab's uh, 29 and Yilmaz is... One year younger, 28. So he's a little bit unfortunate there, isn't he? Footballer of the year, then. We've got three different awards. This is Footballer of the Year. Usmana Dembele won it at the age of 30, still at Barcelona. Leon Bailey playing for PSG. And Tielemans as well featuring there. Thiago Salasco managed to win it in, 2000, in uh, 2028. He's a, an Argentinian region. And lastly, this year, Yao, the Man City player. So Man City have managed to produce a player that has won Footballer of the Year. 
Golden Ball, um, Polish Regen. Three Polish, uh, th three Regen, sorry, featuring there. Then uh, Ernesto Garat, a Regen from Uruguay. And recently, Moise Keane, a real life player, has managed to win the Golden Ball with the Ballon d'Or. Well, Player of the Year, similar story here. That's three different awards. It's a bit confusing. Mbappe at the age of 31, by the way, featuring on that list as well. And the last thing, World well, Team of the Year. We'll just go back three years. So these are the players that have featured. You can pause it if you're interested. This is the overall Team of the Year of the whole experiment, experiment I suppose. We've not got any English players or English teams featuring there because of what we did to those English teams, I suppose. But we do have Harry Kane up front, who, is he still at Dortmund? He's 36 years old, he's still playing for Dortmund. It's, I just find it quite random that he stayed there so long. Did he ever win the league? <sighs> no, Bayern Munich won it pretty much every year. Leipzig won it twice, but Dortmund have finished second quite a few times. He's never won the league. Poor Harry. So I think we'll end it there, guys. Thank you for watching this part five. It might be the last part of this experiment. If so, thank you for your support on the series. But we might do a part six where I simulate 10 years into the future to the year 2040. Either way, until next time, enjoy FM18. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.